You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The, the, the thing I'm, I'm, the reason I keep really focusing on this is because, again, it's how is one making a deliberate effort to use whatever influence they have to ask the necessary questions. To begin to say that, you know, sure, I want to see more black executives with Netflix, but I also want to see how you're spending the money. I, I, I want to know, okay, and again, and let me be real clear, Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, uh, last year announced that Netflix was depositing $100 million in black banks. They announced the initiative that they were in, engaged in. That's the kind of stuff that we have to talk about. That's literally what Dr. King was talking about on April 3rd, 1968, in terms of depositing money in black banks. That's literally what Operation Breadbasket was doing. <clears throat> but they were, Operation Breadbasket was saying, we want jobs, we want you working with black businesses, putting money in black banks, making, make, making investment. We are driving these streaming services, these networks, with our eyeballs. I'm saying the same thing about Stars and Showtime and HBO and Netflix and Hulu and Prime and all the new ones coming along. And what I'm saying to black people, if you're giving somebody your eyeballs, but they're not spending money on folk who look like you, what we are doing, Greg, is making other folks rich and again, monetizing black culture and black people holistically, not a portion of it, holistically benefiting. Oh, no question, brother. We know that black folk have been the entertainment in this white nationalist country since the beginning. So whether it be Norman Lear and everything from Good Times to Jefferson's and all in the family of CBS, whether it be Fox with In Living Color, uh, Living Single, whether it be NBC with 227 and The Cosby Show, A Different World, uh, these, these networks have always harvested black talent for profit. And what you see in the cable uh, area, certainly Comedy Central, certainly uh, Bravo with the Real Housewives franchise, they have now perfected shrinking the necessary uh, investments to uh, pay talent. Reality shows are a form of entertainment sharecropping. They, t I mean, they, they, they take what maybe a hundred thousand to half a million dollars an episode to produce, and they get product placement. You've got ad revenue coming in, and people just glad to be there. So the question then becomes: How, as you say, do we leverage, if we can leverage at all? the type of influence that we might have for a split second to transfer some of this insane amount of revenue that is streaming into the pockets of these folks into our communities. I don't know that we have a good answer for that, but I think part of it requires those who are the, the folks who are the producers and others to say, if you don't do this, we'll move to another platform. Because capitalism, ultimately, you're jailbreaking it now, rolling Martin Unfiltered. You can put a reality show on YouTube. Look at the career of Issa Rae that begins with Awkward Black Girl. I think we have to really take a step back, if we can, as a group, and think about the uh, the entertainment sharecropping model of reality TV, which is nothing but a pure profit endeavor by these broadcast networks and all platforms to get the maximum amount of profit from the minimum form of investment. Um, Reese, I remember when Michael B. Jordan announced um, what he was going to require working forward. This, this, this. This diversity, this equity, uh, I forgot what, what they called, race rider, whatever they called it. I remember Regina King talked about that as well, and folks were talking about uh, they want to see a, a certain percentage of folks are on, on the cruise who are women and who are also black and Latino uh, and using their power. What I am saying to these folks as well is that if you are Michael B. Jordan, <laughs> Let, 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 me, let me actually back that up, because I'm going to use Michael Jordan the same way. Mm -hmm. And for everybody listening, I need, I need y'all to understand, 
There's a difference between influence, <laughs> leverage, and yes, power. Sir. Right. I need everybody who's watching, so allow me, let, so let me unpack this for y'all. There is influence, there is leverage, and there is power. Some people kept saying, Michael Jordan is the most powerful basketball player in the NBA. They're wrong. <laughs> Michael Jordan had influence. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan had leverage. Michael Jordan did not have power. Mm -hmm. If Michael Jordan had power, Michael could have said, team ain't breaking up. Mm. If Michael had power, Michael would have said, y'all gonna give Scotty the contract that he deserves. Mm. He didn't. In fact, Michael did not have power when he was an executive with the Washington Wizards. He came out of retirement, played ball, sold the arenas out. Then when he finished playing basketball the second time, Jordan then said that he was going to play basketball the third time. He then goes into a meeting with Ted Leonis. Come on, brother. Who was a minority owner of the team. And they went in and met with Abe Pollin. Abe Pollin, Reese, was the owner of the Washington Wizards. Michael tells Abe, I'm ready to resume my job as head of basketball operations. Abe mm -hmm. says, Michael, we thank you for what you've done. We're moving <laughs> in another direction. Mm -hmm. Here's a check for $10 million and thank you for your services. Michael <laughs> looked at Ted Leonis like, what the hell is going on here? Ted Leonis looked at Michael like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. And... Michael got pissed off, stomped, got up, and walked out the meeting, got in his Jaguar, and drove off, left the $10 million check on the table. Mm -hmm. A pollen taught Michael Jordan a lesson. Your ass don't have power. I do, mm -hmm. because power just fired you. Mm -hmm. Now, let me bring this thing back to what I was talking about with Michael B. Jordan. There is no movie without Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can go hire some other folk, but actors should be looking at themselves as, he should look at himself as <coughs> Michael B. Jordan, Inc. That's right. And a Michael mm -hmm. B. Jordan, Inc. should do this here. Y'all want Michael B. Jordan to be in your movie, right? Okay. Here is my diversity index, my race equity index. So I want, Erica, these number of people, I need to see these folks on the set. Um, do y'all have a list of diverse caterers? <laughs> we gonna need some diverse caterers. Um, I, the, your transportation company. Do you have a list of diverse transportation providers? I, I, I'm gonna need you to do that. Uh, uh, your, your, your travel agents. Do you have a list of diverse travel agents? Okay, I need to see that. Oh, hold up now. While we also on this, I need to know who we marketing this movie to. And, th and then what black media outlets are being invited to the press junkets? Uh, how much money of the advertising budget is going to be spent on black media outlets? See, some of y'all not paying attention who are watching because y'all didn't hear what I just said. Roland <laughs> wasn't selfish saying what y'all going to do for Roland when it comes to black media. No, I said black media, catering, limousine contracts, travel contracts. I'm talking about, see, do y'all see me? This is how it needs to be. It needs to be 360. It needs to be 360. 
Let me go the other way for some of y'all. It needs to be 360. It needs to be 360. <laughs> That's how black creators should be coming to the table and saying, okay, if you're Jordan Peele, I've got a prime Amazon Prime video deal. If you are Donald Glover, Erica, I just signed a new deal with Prime Video. If I'm Shonda Rhimes before the Netflix, oh, y'all trying to recruit me for this deal? I need to know 360 of all of these things happening because if y'all want my talent, I got to make sure my people are getting paid. Reese, go ahead. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I think that, you know, it's all about, like you said, it's leveraging your power. And, you know, unfortunately, not all black actors, even ones that we look at as powerhouses, have that power or that leverage. Today, I just saw an article about how Tar Taraji P. Henson got paid $40,000 for the curious case of Benjamin Button, and that movie went on to make $350 million. I was talking mm. yesterday about how uh, um, a, a comedian, and I forget her name at the moment, I think Brenda Jones from Mad TV found out that a peer of hers that came on after hers made more money than her. And when she asked to renegotiate her salary, they told her, no, absolutely not. And so I agree with everything you said. I can't restate it better than you, and I can't even add on to it better than you. So what I will say is, going back to the point I've been making many times on this show, is about validating Black outlets. Mm, come on, Lisa. Kev on stage, mm -hmm. who created his own app from scratch. He does yeah. exactly what you're talking about, Roland. He, 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 he hires Black crews. He's owning his content. He's putting on other comedians in the middle of a pandemic, paying them well, and he's really creating this whole pool of talent around him, and everybody wins in every aspect, 360 degrees. But you don't see a Kev on stage nominated for an NAACP Image Award, or you don't see him getting the kind of mainstream, you know, a mainstream attention that he deserves. And so the same, same goes with Roland Martin Unfiltered and other Black outlets, Black-owned outlets. And so... What I would encourage the audience to do and what I would encourage these celebrities who have influence to do is to put some of their efforts behind validating these black outlets that are actually about paying, uplifting, and bringing black dollars to black people. Because one last point I'll make, I saw a thread from this white woman who was a comedian on Netflix, and she had a special that was on Netflix. And one of the things she said, and it could have just been her deal, it might not have been everybody's deal, is that... She doesn't get any residuals from her uh, her special. She sold her show to Netflix. And so after that, she don't get paid from it. And so even when it looks like somebody has made it, oh, they have a Netflix show, oh, they have a this show, or they have a that show, if you're not continuing to get residuals like Dave Chappelle brought attention to as well with the Chappelle show, then you're still not profiting. And so that's where owning your own stuff, having your own platform is really the key to financial independence. And it's really the key to cooperative economics and putting other black people on so that everybody gets a piece of that pie. Erica. Yeah. Amen and hallelujah to what Reese laid out and the power dynamics that you laid out for us, Roland. And this goes back to what we were just talking about on last week when you talked about the Black Collective. There has to be an interest in doing that. What Kev on stage did was very deliberate. And if there is an interest in being deliberate and building power and making sure, as uh, it's been said on this show, that if you're saying that you're the, it's lonely at the top, then, dummy, you didn't bring anybody with you. That, <laughs> that should really be an offense, right? So when you look at the ways with which um, this white gaze, and Dr. Carr mentioned it on last Sunday, uh, excuse me, last Saturday on in, um, in Class with Dr. Carr, talked about the whole white famous piece. There's nothing wrong with fame mm -hmm. across all spectrum, but to actually uh, sit in and say that, okay, I made it now that these people, as Reese has talked about, validated me, there's something um, demonstratively wrong with that and, and, and um, that's problematic. So as we continue to really engage and really make sure that models like the one that you have example for everyone kept on stage as Reese brought forward Issa Rae as Dr. Carr talked about when we see those models if people are really um, interested um, because I don't know that everybody is interested but if people are really interested in actually building the collective 
that what you just laid out and the examples that are before us, that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, Greg, see, Greg, mm-hmm. what, 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 what I'm really uh, laying out is for those of us, those of us who have amassed that, that, that level of influence and leverage to wield it. What, what, what I'm talking about is to literally say, ain't nothing moving unless this happens. See, what I'm talking about is a shift. I'm talking, I, I, I ain't trying let, let, let me see. I'm not trying to uh, do this here. Switch to this camera up here, please. Switch to me up here. I, I ain't trying to do this. I'm just going to give y'all a... This is what I think, Greg, folk trying to do. They trying to... They trying to slightly move. I'm talking about taking this tray and throwing this son of a bitch way across the room. I'm talking about, I'm talking about literally taking it apart and just slinging it. I'm talking about completely wrecking this whole joint. See, Greg, they ain't got no problem if we want to come in here inching, inching. Mm-hmm. No, this ain't the moment for inching. Greg, this is the moment to literally walk in the room like this here. <laughs> we ain't signing no deal until all of these things are done. Yes, sir. We're doing, yes, and sir. then if you black, and if you black, and if you got a content deal at Paramount Plus, at HBO Max, at Hulu, at Prime Video, use the Netflix deal saying, let me ask y'all a question. Are y'all going to deposit $100 million in black banks like Reed Hastings and Netflix did? I, I need everybody to listen to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm going to name them. Netflix... Hulu, Prime Video, Apple Plus, Disney Plus, HBO Max, Paramount Plus. I just named seven. Discovery is coming on what they own. That's eight. I need everybody listening to me. That's eight. I know there are others. I'm just going to name those eight. Netflix announced we're going to put $100 million in black banks. They now established the floor. So if you a black content provider, you should say, y'all gonna at least match that. That mean that the black content people in Hollywood, if they challenge, I'll throw an Apple, I think that Apple Plus I mentioned, you throw them in, you can now go from 100 million placed in black banks to 800 million placed in black banks. You can now cause them to have to go out and hire a plethora. Now, when you tell the companies, you got to have a race index for all of your productions. Now, all of a sudden, you want to dramatically increase black limousine company business and black catering business and all, and all that sort of stuff. That's all I'm saying. Stop moving this son of a bitch an inch or two. Say, we about to sit here and just shift the whole damn game. Mm. Roland, first of all, brother, I thought you was going to throw that stand into the pool. That's why I was waiting for that move. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. I was going to get no, that I out can't. of the way. I, hold on. I got... No, you understand. I got two iPads, two phones on here. And so, no, That's that wasn't about to happen. But trust me, uh, I... <laughs> 
I was and thinking it. F no couch. <laughs> no, no, but no, but 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 I'm laughing, but I'm you know it really builds to a point. Bob Marley once sang, "Old pirates, yet yeah, a rabbi <laughs> show sold out to the merchant ship." You understand? Yeah, yeah. That was a song called Redemption Song. Now, if you watched mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle a couple of weeks ago in his uh, mini monologue of the same name, Redemption Song, he talked. Now, that's how you will influence. This guy was basically tethered to a contract he had signed with Comedy Central and HBO. Using the momentum of his platform and his popularity, he forced them to pay him because he told all of his fans to stop watching. Now, that's one that's one way of doing it. But I laughed because I thought about the pool because I thought to myself, everybody watching this, everybody watching us right now, everybody who watches Roland Martin Unfiltered all every day and then 24 hours in terms of the replays, the broadcast and everything, everybody watching and getting the soothing sound of that waterfall there in Jacksonville. <laughs> Understand this. It is nice. Y'all hey, <laughs> Y'all paid for that, ain't it nice? Y'all paid for that. Meaning yeah. what? When Roland Martin comes in a room, he can take it or leave it. See, the importance of being able to do that means that, you know, Netflix, $100 million, okay, Netflix made $25 billion. Billion would it be last year. So you got to at least match that, but make no mistake about it. When you don't lose your, when you don't use your influence, you end up, being what uh, what Bill Roden and them might call, or Kurt Flood might call originally, a well-paid slave. Ooh. Now, Roland Martin yeah. is owned by all of us who invest in him. So when you sit at the table, you can wield an influence that allows you to take it or leave it, but also, and I'll end here, this is why everybody watching this has to support this platform. Your influence, like Dave Chappelle's influence, is based on the fact that when people hear you, they trust you, they rely on the if Roland Martin said it, I may not agree with everything he said, but I trust he's saying it because he's thinking about our best interests. And when you have that kind of trust, you can either, to kind of paraphrase France Fanon, you can either fulfill the investment of trust people give you, or you can betray it. There's no middle ground. And at some point, you got to choose. So invest in something that people own. Invest in Roller Martin Unfiltered, and we kick in the door. You ain't got to worry about it. All you're going to hear is the company saying, Papa, don't hit me no more. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and, what people have to, and what people have to understand is, and, and, and I, I, I certainly I understand what that brother was talking about when he said how long it took. What I'm trying to get our folk to realize, I'm trying to get our people to realize that I'm not waiting for somebody to give me a green light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for somebody to say, you ready. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for somebody to say, We'll fund it. I'm not waiting for somebody to say, it's now time. That's it. What I'm trying to get everybody to understand is that when black people who have built their names and they've got following to what Greg said with Dave Chappelle, I said... I didn't text Dave Chappelle. I sent him an audio file. I said, I got to talk this one. (laughs) What Dave Chappelle... See, ooh, y'all. Y'all gonna make me (laughs) preach this. What Dave Chappelle did was activate his base and he unleashed them on Netflix and HBO. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said... I'm about to show y'all. And he said to the audience, I-, I need y'all not to watch. That's right. What happened? He, we told Netflix, can y'all kindly take that down? <laughs> the, the, the CEO of Netflix wasn't crazy. Nope. Because they've already invested. They invested more money in Dave Chappelle than he made from the Comedy Central show. Mm. He wasn't crazy mm. enough 
to say, we gonna keep running the Chappelle show to make Comedy Central happy, because he said, hell, I'm not gonna have Dave Chappelle walk away from me and take his talents and his followers and their eyeballs to another streaming service. And so now all of a sudden, they now making the money. So they said, hell yeah, we gonna take this thing down. Is how we gonna do it. <laughs> Y'all, that's called using your influence and your leverage and then talking to power. That's and right. so what I'm saying is to all of these black actors and black actresses and black producers who all have made these lists on the rap and variety and the Hollywood reporter and deadline, the most influential, powerful people. And this is that and the other. What I'm saying is I need you to come to the table in your full blackness. Mm. I need you to walk to the table and walk in your full full authority. I'm trying to get you to walk in the room and say, we are not about to have a conversation just about me. I mm. wanna know, are you putting money in black banks? Are you helping black caterers and black limousine companies? And coming out with a, do a roll call because now what you're doing is you are forcing them to realize how they have been ignoring and denying black folks in so many areas. And that's how you take the collective and then you begin to build the village and you then begin to, to take it further. And imagine what it's like five years from now if a sister comes up and says thank you Michael B. Jordan uh, not mm. for being people's sexiest man alive but because <laughs> because of what you said they hired me on two productions and now I've done mm. 25 productions for my catering company thank you for saying what you said when it came to transportation companies because I had two cars and all of a sudden because of what you did and getting those contracts I now have a fleet of 50 or 100 limousines uh and, and, uh, and, and sprinters and other uh, transportation vehicles because you use your power. Yeah, I watched you and you didn't know about me, but because of what you said and did and forcing them to change, then that's how this thing is going, which is all I'm trying to say to everybody. The same thing applies in these political campaigns. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna end this right now because I told y'all I was gonna preach this thing and that is this yes. here. <laughs> I, need the, I need the same thing happen in political campaigns. I need to see, like, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there right now, and it don't even matter, uh, and I'm not just putting it on her, but I need Vice President Kamala Harris to call the DSCC and to call mm. the DCCC and to call mm. the Democratic Governors Associations and call in mm. Emily's List and call in labor unions and call in all of these folks, the environmentalists, all these folks who are funding uh, this political apparatus and say, same thing. What black event planners are y'all using? What black audio mm -hmm. video companies are y'all using? What black streamers are y'all using? What black ad mm -hmm. agencies are y'all using? What black political consultants are y'all using? Because see, again, if it ain't, if it, I go back, if it ain't, with, if you don't have black talent, if you don't have black votes, if you don't have black political power, then nobody can get elected. All I'm simply saying is challenging folk on this whole deal. Because see, I'm going to tell y'all what happened to us when it came to the Georgia race, when we sought media money, but they funded us with celebrity influencer money. See, y'all ain't gonna make me really go there wow. with this here. See, mm, don't Jesus. make me have to go there where, because what they offered is not what we asked for. We appreciated mm. what we got, but it was not what we actually uh, asked for, and we over-delivered on what uh, we did uh, in Georgia and what was funded. Yes. And so all I'm saying yes. is, if you're going to be black and you're going to come into the room, I need you to walk in your full authority. I need you to walk in with all of your people at your back, your ancestors at your back, your present day mm. advocates at your back. And when you sit in that room and you walk in your full authority, and when you sit down, you need to bring the presence of your people with you. So when they look across the table at you, they not just looking at you, but looking at an army of black people going back yes. centuries behind you and say, I'm here now to do business. That's right. All right. That's, That's right, what we should be talking about. Yes, Folks, sir. that is it for us.
Greg Carr, Reese, Erica, I certainly appreciate that. Thank you so very much, uh, folks. Uh, I'll be back in studio tomorrow. Uh, we've had a fantastic time here in Jacksonville on the road. Uh, Janetta B. I cannot wait till y'all see the conversation between Janetta B. Cole and Tiffany Lofton, Charlie Cobb, mm -hmm. and Philip Agnew, and of course, uh, mm -hmm. my man uh, 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 Cliff Albright, Ambassador Andrew Young, and my one-on-one -on -one with 90-year-old Fred Gray. Uh, we shot yes. yesterday in Tuskegee, Alabama. It it was an unbelievable conversation all week, uh, and so we certainly appreciate it. Our crew has been fantastic. Uh, we, we are here, uh, and uh, I posted this on Instagram, and this is going to be the last point uh, I, I go ahead and make uh, because I need people to understand. Uh, I, I am, uh, I, I, I said this on Instagram, I'm an efficiency geek. And so what we do here is when we travel, and also because of COVID, I had somebody who posted, uh, well, I see, I see how uh, fan money is being spent. I'll say you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a fabulous house and water, on a waterfront here in Jacksonville, Florida. But because of COVID, I didn't want to have us in eight hotel rooms, okay? So what we did is everybody been tested. We in the house, COVID-free. Now we can actually have our whole staff living together in the same location. It's an eight-bedroom, eight-bathroom house here. Not only that, we were able to shoot all of our interviews here as well uh, we did them outside uh, so it gave us the full protection and also kept us from having to break to unpack pack take stuff down set it up and so this is how we also are efficient when we're doing our work same thing last week when I was in st. Louis I was in st. Louis for three days Thursday Friday and Saturday I can't wait to y'all see the interview I did with Wesley Bell the first black uh, DA there and also Kim Gardner the first black and uh, black woman DA there as well then of course we also sat down with Michael McMillan the amazing stuff they're doing with the st. Louis area urban league and then of course my amazing conversation with Tef Poe y'all we shot all all of that stuff, y'all, in essentially uh, two days there uh, in St. Louis. And so the stuff that we are doing is about taking uh, this show uh, on the road, taking our power and helping our folk out. Uh, it's allow allowing us to be able to constantly uh, put them in a position where we're telling the stories. And so this is not the only time uh, we're going to be doing this. Uh, we're going to be doing this and going to other, other cities as well. Uh, I simply cannot wait. Uh, to the folks in the control room, do me a favor. I'm loading a, a video in Group Me. Uh, I want y'all to play the video. You got to turn the music down because we don't own the music rights to it. Uh, but I want y'all to run that. But what I'm talking about here, y'all, is we are creating this whole deal uh, to, to be able to tell our stories in a unique way, to be able to capture these conversations that exist between our people and allowing them, Greg, to be able to tell their story in their own way, not in a five, eight minute segment. And here's the other deal, Erica, we ain't doing this because it's February and Black History Month. No. <laughs> so I mean that's like, that's cute, but that's not why we're doing it. And so and so so what we are trying to do uh, is to actually build something. And here's the other piece, y'all, because we own it and control it. This ain't that's gonna it. get edited by somebody who don't know our story. The, you're not yes, gonna sir. see. Y'all yeah. need to understand. This is you, you're not gonna have a situation where oh we gonna do an hour and a half, two hour interview, and then we gonna pick the 10, 12 minutes that we think are interesting. No, we gonna give you the whole thing so you can actually hear it uh, in its fullness and in and in its rawness. But see, that's what I'm talking about. But see, this only happens if it's black owned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This only happens if it's black control, and this only happens if it's funded by you. What Greg right. said, being able to sit at the table and say no. And let me be real clear, okay? We got some white folks who are watching this show. I told y'all yeah. about the 70-year-old uh, white uh, gay man <laughs> who sent me a letter. He said, I watched Roland Martin Unfiltered. And I appreciate his $50 the same way I yeah. appreciate somebody black $50, somebody who not gay, somebody who not white. It don't matter. But the folk who have given us $1 or $5 or $10, y'all need to understand how our people are. I, we were in Atlanta, uh, Erica, at the Biden, the last Biden rally for Ossoff and Warnock. And a sister saw us on YouTube. She said, I needed my daughter to come meet you. She brought her $20. Oh, God. She came there in the cold to get a photo and brought her $20 donation for our Bring the Funk fan club. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I, I've had yes, people yeah. stop. 
I've had people stop me in airports and put $10 in my hand. They said, you ain't gonna put my name down, but I'm making my contribution to Roland Martin Unfiltered. I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm not, look, I ain't, this ain't no Creflo dollar stuff where I'm trying to make stuff up oh, uh, to, to get you to give and, and give a story. No, I'm telling you literally uh, what we have experienced as we have traveled mm -hmm. around this country. Yesterday at the, at the Tuskegee, the museum there, man, the, the multicultural oh. center, man, they laid it out for us. They were great. They were wonderful. They had the video on the sign. Uh, it was all of that. Uh, I mean, we just had an amazing conversation. We had, uh, uh, hey, get Chalet. I need her to send me, tell her to text me to Chalet. I need the name of the black caterer in Tuskegee and the black caterer here in Jacksonville. Text it to me right mm -hmm. now. Uh, all of that. So I just want y'all to understand why we're doing this. We're doing this because we're not interested in talking about black excellence and only through the prism, and it's no disrespect, but we ain't talking about black excellence as if it's defined by Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, by, uh, by uh, Beyonce, by LeBron, by, no, no. The depth, the depth of talent and knowledge that we have in our community that goes yes, unknown and unsupported every day That's right. is unbelievable. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here texting, mm -hmm. congratulations to Bree Newsom on having your baby, you and your husband. But we're gonna be Aww. recording a conversation between Bree Newsom and <laughs> Reverend Dr. William J. Barber. We're gonna be we're gonna wow. recording a conversation between rapper Chris Payne and Chuck D. We are I've already confirmed it today. So we're doing that. Wow. And so what I'm trying to get y'all to understand, we're doing this because I'm not interested in asking somebody else for permission. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. We yeah. have the same knowledge and we can buy the same cameras and the same yes, lights sir. and the same, yes. uh, the same uh, live view. We can rent the same big ass houses with pools that they can as well. Uh, we can do <laughs> all the same stuff but we also need your support. So please support us. Again, show the graphic, please. Cash app, dollar sign, REM Unfiltered. Remember, you give on YouTube. We only get 55% of that. They get 45%. They already got billions. So just go get, get the money directly to us so we get 100% uh, because yeah. I prefer 100% over 55%. Uh, so support <laughs> us at cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal.me forward slash R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo.com is forward slash RM Unfiltered. Zell, rolling at rolling at smartin uh Money order, 1625 K Street, Northwest, Suite 400, Washington, D.C., 2006. All right, folks, back to that Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.